Hello and welcome to episode number 134 where I speak with Dr. Sujata Kakada about menopause. We talk about the Ayurvedic perception of menopause and how it really isn't that scary transition that it's considered here in the West. So please stay tuned to get lots of tips and guidelines for maintaining balance during perimenopause and menopause. Hello and welcome to Elements of Ayurveda, Empowering Wisdom of Life. I'm your host, Colette, and in this podcast, I hope to empower you to take charge of your own health by sharing the holistic teachings of Ayurveda, the ancient healing tradition from India. We will also discuss topics like health and wellness, nutrition, yoga, fitness, meditation, breath work, and much more, as well as interviewing lots of inspiring people along the way. My humble wish is to help you to connect to your true nature, to Mother Nature, and to each other. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe to the show, and the new episodes will automatically download for you to enjoy. If you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend you listen to the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. I've also set up a Facebook group for us to connect and to support each other. And I'd love for you to join me over at Elements of Ayurveda podcast group. And now here's the show. Today's episode is brought to you by Banyan Botanical's Women's Natural Transition, which is formulated with the most potent Ayurvedic herbs for supporting a woman's natural transition through a menopause. As the body, mind, and spirit undergo this major life shift, natural transition supports the systems that need it most, not only during menopause, but also for the time leading up to it, and even afterwards. Approach menopause gracefully with this all-natural, organic blend of Ayurvedic and Western herbs. Women's natural transition cools hot flashes, supports the natural balance of female hormones, and calms the body and mind during this new chapter in your life story. It rejuvenates the mind, the memory, and concentration, and promotes subtle emotions of courage, love, and acceptance. Shatavari, one of the most renowned Ayurvedic herbs for women's health, works with Vidari Kanda to nourish and balance the female productive tissue layer, while adaptogenic support from ashwagandha helps to combat stress and rejuvenate the body. Designed for any stage of menopause, this tablet promotes energy, cleanses toxins, and helps focus the mind. It is also beneficial to the heart, which can experience stress as the body goes through menopausal changes. Banyu Botanicals Certified B Corp is committed to producing the highest quality Ayurvedic products using USDA certified organic herbs that are sustainably sourced and fairly traded. All of their products are third-party tested to ensure product quality and safety. Elements listeners save 20% on the retail price of this product by visiting banyanbotanicals.com forward slash elements. Also, you can find the link in the show notes. Banyan ships to customers in the U.S. If you reside outside the U.S., you can find their products on Amazon or Emerson Ecologics. Manium Botanicals has also kindly put together a wonderful bundle of their women's health products for a special giveaway. So stay tuned as I'm going to announce all the details very soon. Hello and welcome to Elements of Ayurveda. I am very happy to welcome back today Dr. Sujata Kakada, who is lead Ayurvedic physician and co-founder of Amirta City Ayurvedic Clinic in Bali. Now, Dr. Sujata has been a guest on the podcast many times now, and Dr. Sujata was my doctor and mentor when I arrived in Bali for my first Panchakarma. Dr. Sujata, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Colette. Thanks for having me again. 
always, always a pleasure. So today we want to delve into the world of menopause, a huge topic. And I think this is something that Ayurveda can really shed a lot of light on as well. So I think Dr. Sujata, let's start with talking about the lead up to menopause and coming in when we're in the pitta stage of life. Can you talk to us about this stage and why it's so important for us to take care of our health and well-being during the pitta stage of life before we come into menopause? Mm. Um, we need to understand what actually menstruation means to a woman mm. and what really goes on in our body physiologically and mentally. Um, so it, in, in Ayurveda, a menstruating woman is called rutumati, means she's in full-on season she's experiencing the life in a more magnified a complete sense mm. that's the reason a menstruation woman um you know she becomes sensitive she's sensitive to energy and the whole process of physiology what goes on energy movement goes on it's much more active it's like anything would be looking through a magnifying lens um, and that's the reason some women, the, the physical, the, the body changes, the, her emotions changes, everything becomes much more sensitive in her life. Mm -hmm. So it's a full on blooming state. So that's how in Ayurveda we see um, the menstruating women. So everything is active and flowing, doing what needs to be done in order for the body to complete a cycle. So it's, it's the menstruation itself is a season of the body. It completes a season inside. So if you look at the process of menstruation, um, starting with the ovulation, the, um, the hormones produce the estrogen and then um, making the endometrial wall thicken to receive the egg um, and waiting for the sperm for the mating. And then when it doesn't happen, the cycle finishes and the endometrium sheds. And as it's about to shed as a cleaning process, the capillaries embedded into the walls of the your uterine wall uh, ruptures and then we get the menstruation flow. So it's like a whole cycle goes on in your body. So this cycle, which contain controlled by mainly by the two hormones of the estrogen and progesterone, they're responsible not just to have the ovulation and thicken the endometrium and keep the period. So this is just a, a byproduct of what happens in the creative essence of the women. But these hormones are responsible for various different metabolism in our body. It influences your thyroid function. It influences your gut function. It influences your strength of your bone, absorption of minerals. So it's like a whole cycle goes through when the women's body goes through the menstruation. So to, if this menstruation process is not supported well, particularly during the period of menstruation, uh, with care, rest, right kind of food, uh, comfort, love, nurture. So the body is sensitive. There's a whole change shift happens. And if it is not stabilized, it will have an effect of increasing all the three doshas, basically. Primarily, it would affect pitta and then vata, and then it can influence the kapha aggravation in your body. So this can become a residual increase or imbalance created during the menstrual time or the age of the women. And then when we reach to the menopause, the cessation, like it's a cessation of the seasonal changes that happens in the body. So that means if something is created and accumulated and the, the season doesn't happen to pick it up and clean and move forward and then arises the trouble. And as the women stops menstruating, um, we enter into a stage called vata predominant. No matter what your constitution is, vata is going to be ruling our body. And if you are a vata predominant constitution, you may have a bit more challenges related to vata if you've been not careful to taking care of your body doshas, your diet, lifestyle. And then you need to be extra careful to take care of the vata imbalance as you go through the process of menopause. Great, great. Thanks for that explanation. So the pitta stage is from puberty to menopause, and then the vata stage of life would be post-menopause. Exactly. Okay. And so going back to the pitta stage, um, the cycles, the menstrual cycle, are all three of the doshas involved in that? Would like the kapha be the buildup of the uterine lining? 
and then, and then Peter and Vata the the expulsion of the blood. Yeah. Okay. The the estrogen hormone represents more of a pitta nature in our body. Mm. That's why women in the cycle, like a estro- estrogen cycle, she's much more vibrant, much more energetic. Mm-hmm. She feels strong. She feels, you know, it's ovulation. She's in the full on creative mode. And then the when the progesterone state starts, so that's more of a kapha state. Okay. So and then the progesterone reduces and the, the whole process of the menstruation happens. That's a vata. So particularly the apana vata is responsible for the menstrual flow and complete clearing the contraction of your uterus and releasing the blood and the debris of the uterine wall and the ovum, etc. Great, great. I think it's great to relate the cycle to the the doshas. And so in India, I believe that there is no word for menopause and no word for perimenopause. We focus a lot on this in the West, the perimenopause, which in the West, it's said that that could last or come 10 years before menopause. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about the Ayurvedic uh, perception of this? Mm. Which you discussed slightly with the seasons already, but I think it's, it's important mm-hmm. for people to understand this. Yeah, the... The the heaviness and the weight given to the menopausal stage of the woman, it it's mostly comes in the Western world. Mm. You know, I grew up until age of 24 in India, and I never came across anybody talking about the menopause <laughs> until then. Right. Um, so it, it's more came into my knowledge. Um, you know, you know, when I went to the medical school, yes, you say the menopause, the only understanding about the menopause is you stop, stop ovulating and there's no menstrual flow happening. This Mm -hmm. is all was about, there was no much of a big, uh, stress and importance, or it's almost like it comes to be declining of your life and your importance and value who you are as a woman. So Mm -hmm. that, that kind of appearance I have only seen in the Western world. And in Ayurvedic science, the menopause is not considered to be, okay, one major illness or a condition that you need to be, uh, you know, treating or you will have a challenge, difficulties. It wasn't, it's never seen like that. Mm -hmm. So the state of menopause is more considered to be, okay, you're, you're going, you're entering a different state in your life. And it's more, it's considered to be, you're going to be becoming a wise woman. You're becoming a, you're walking towards the, the Vrida stage of your life, um, meaning you, you, you become a wise person, means from your experience, you can share the knowledge that you have experienced, which turned into wisdom, and you become a person that you could nurture, guide in the, the younger generation of women who is around you. So this, this is how the menopause is uh, considered and respected and valued. I love that, that the Vata stage of life is considered the wisdom stage of life. And I am a big promoter of that. I think that's the way we should look at this stage of life, that all the, the wisdom that you've gained during your lifetime, you can now act as a mentor and advisor to the younger folk, which I think is a beautiful way to look at that. So in the classic text, how is menopause presented? The menopause is not mentioned as a condition in this area. So there is there is only mentioning of around certain age, the women would stop ovulating and the menstruation would come to an end. Mm. Um, that's all. So there was there's no stress saying, okay, this, there's going to be a disastrous changes in the body <laughs> or she would suffer. Right. None of those things uh, is being stressed or given such a, a highlighted importance. Yes, you know. and maybe that's because it's not a condition, right? I feel like in the mm-hmm. West, we build up this perception of menopause into something that's negative, and it's a transition to be concerned about. So I really think that we need to change our perspective on this and, and how we enter into this transition and not to fear it or not to be concerned about it because if we are imbalanced, right, we shouldn't suffer these typical symptoms that we're told we should suffer, like the hot flashes and and the the, the mood swings and so on, right? If we're imbalanced, yeah. we should go through it. So let's talk a little bit about what happens to the body from an Ayurvedic perspective during menopause. Um. 
during the menopausal stage, um, you know, the, oval, the, the menstrual blood or the menstrual flow ha- has a, a strong influence by pitta. Mm. So when the woman attains the menopause, um, the cessation time, uh, the processing of pitta through the cyclic pattern that means it's it's not going to be released. So it, it's a release time for a woman. So, you know, most of us just before the menstrual flow starts, we feel full. So in our life, it's for a woman. Um, the one important thing, even though Ayurveda, there's no much stress given out as menopause being a difficult, challenging period and you need to be careful and it's it's like all downhill. But it's very important is given how a menstruating woman should take care of herself. Mm. So because it's it's a body going through a total transformation. So everything, I, as I said before, everything is sensitive, magnified, energy is intense and flowing. Mm-hmm. So she need to be protected and given a care nourishment. But also this is treated as a taboo in in some Asian cultures, in, in Indian cultures, you probably heard about yeah. menstruating women should not be touched or she should not be, you know, temple. going outside. Yeah, stay, uh, like it should not enter the temple, mm. go into public places, mm. or should not be talking. So because if, if you see historically, women are homemakers, they mm. are caregivers, you know, there are family doctors, they're clean, cook, nourish, and they, they, they carry the family, they nurture the family. Mm-hmm. So the only way a woman could have a rest is with this, of telling that she cannot go out, she cannot touch, she cannot cook, she cannot do this. Mm. Otherwise, there's no way women could take these three, four days off and say, oh, cook for me or I'm going to stay home just rest Mm -hmm. and I'm going to go into my tent Mm -hmm. which is which is would not have been practical so this a a story is given to that so that the woman can give in naturally that time and rest what she needs but sometimes it's taken much more as like she is in a time she's polluted she is dirty she that's why she cannot that's not the truth so it's just a, a social norm it created to allow women so that she can have this restful time. Oh, I so like that it, way of looking at it. So there's less guilt and shame around it. It's absolutely. Just, right. Yes. And, and, and she is much more energized and more open. So if, if you during that period, if you go into the temple, the energy and with the energy of the person, it would be total too much to, for the body to experience. Right. 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 And 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 her body is physically sensitive. That's why I said, do not do the strenuous work of cooking at three meals a day, carrying water from the well, sweeping, cleaning, carrying. So our body needs rest. And if we fail to do that for ourselves, so that means we're going to put all the three doshas in danger. Mm. They're going to aggravate and accumulate. And uh, if it's not taken care soon after your menstruation, they're going to go deeper tissues and manifest into diseases later on. And that's where, that's how we create the the precursor for when we, when we go through perimenopause and into menopause. And this is what would result into what we're going to face as a challenge as a menopause. Because Western world do, don't see menstruation as a period to be careful, concerned, be with oneself, mm-hmm. meditate, connect to yourself and feel the womanhood rather than people would complain and feel angry about that their body is going through these changes. And these changes gives for women as enormous power to be the creator yeah. and which is an ability like men don't have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's the beautiful thing about Ayurveda in every way it honors cycles and seasons of life and the circadian cycle of the day. And there's all these rituals. There's the rituals of Dinacharya. And I feel that they're, they're, it's so necessary to have this ritual with our menstrual cycle during that pitta stage of life so that, like you said, there aren't these these imbalances which will then cause problems during menopause. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about honoring the cycle. We're going to backtrack a little and honor the menstrual cycle during the pitta phase of life and how 
you mentioned taking time away from your normal chores during your cycle, definitely not exercising. In some cultures, they would have gone into a red tent, you know, and, and like you said, it's a very creative time. The woman is very energetically sensitive and it's also a very intuitive time, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You are in a heightened state of energy and awareness. Your consciousness is much more aware. That's why some women feel extremely emotional and sensitive. Mm. The reason for that is they're more connected, more conscious. Like it's, it's your body does it, not intentionally. You're sitting there in a meditation. You want to feel. No, the hormones just opens the gate of your nadis and channels and it, you, you're much more connected. But what happens is when you're connected, you really get in touch with what's there inside you. So that's why women feel, some people feel very angry. Some people feel very sad. Some people feel totally stuck and confused. So it, it just shows what's really going on inside you. So mm -hmm. in order to, for you to giving a chance to reevaluate where you're in your life, what's not working for you, what you're hiding, what you're suppressing, and work on that. Yeah. So. I would say always a woman when through the men, men, menstruation, if she has got a strong PMS, we call, you know, postmenstrual syndrome. So like having all these symptoms and you know, physical and emotional. So it, it's a, it's telling you that something you need to really look into. You're ignoring certain things. Mm -hmm. So that's why taking time for yourself and not doing any strenuous exercises in particularly if women are doing yoga, you know, inversions and too many hectic um, asanas, which you're totally, because when you practice yoga and pranayama, you're totally working and guiding the energy in the right path in your body. Mm -hmm. And when you menstruate, your energy needs to flow to the earth mm -hmm. to feel grounded. It's a pr pr function of apana vayu. Apana vayu need to move downwards to ground you. And particularly women who have less grounded, who are less grounded, who feels energy too much in their head and feel spacey and all those things. And they can't take a break and they want to do lots of exercise mm -hmm. and um, and sometimes I find it um, pity that you know those, there are so many yoga teacher trainings and everything happens and sometimes the 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 students who come out of the class they would not even some classes they would not have this understanding of during the menstruation you should not right. be doing any asanas inversion twist mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. which would move the apana in the opposite direction and the, the, the diet plays important. You want to have diet very light and easy, digestible and warm in nature uh, because your Agni is going to be weak at this time because your body is processed. The Agni is used to cleanse and transform. So the diet needs to be simple, easily digestible, um, you know, smaller quantity. Um, yeah, these kind of food. And also um, some women have strong ca ca craving for chocolate. Um, this is just because chocolate is rich with magnesium, copper, and iron, which helps to build the blood. So you crave that if your menstrual flow is very heavy and, you know, having that just after your menstruation to support that is a good thing. Um, yeah, so these are the, the basic little thing, rest and, you know, simple food, allow yourself to be looked after, do not do any strenuous work, any extreme exercises, inversions, bicycling. These things should not be done, and if it is need to be done, you know, yoga can be practiced. There are still some asanas we mm -hmm. can do, which will support the flow of apana. That, that those things can be practiced, particularly for women experiencing strong cramps and pain and stuff. Yeah, such beautiful tips there. Thank you. That's it. It should be seen as a restorative time, a nourishing time. We have this opportunity every month to give ourselves permission to slow down a little. And it's only for a few days every month. And I think it's a great opportunity, like you said, rather than ignoring it and pushing through, which we tend to do in the West, is to take time out and really reflect. And also checking in on how these PMS symptoms are in your body, how you experience your cycle, because all these are signals from the body of what's happening, right? If there's any doshic imbalances, you will feel it at this time. If you have imbalanced or aggravated pitta, you'll feel sharp cramps, right? Or you'll be overheated, heated emotions. 
Mm-hmm. Like a symptoms like um, one can experience uh, like a heavy menstrual flow, so mm-hmm. uncontrollable menstrual flow due to too much of pitta can happen. Then cramps, aches, pain radiating to your lower back, lower abdomen, to legs, they can come from vata. And you can have lots of mucus coming, lots of big clots coming due to too much of kapha um, aggravation in the, uh, during the menstruation time or what's your body been going through just before um, the menstruation started. So as promised, I'm jumping in here to tell you about the Banyu Botanical Special Women's Health Giveaway. This bundle of products includes Women's Natural Transition, Healthy Bones, the Banyu Botanical's Wonderful Beauty Balm, and Women's Support. So this competition is open to U.S. listeners as Banyu Botanical ships within the U.S. only. And all you have to do is click on the link in the show notes to enter the competition or just visit my website elementshealingandwellbeing.com go to the events tab and you can enter the competition there and for those of you outside the US I don't want you to feel neglected I am searching for companies with the same wonderful values as many botanicals outside the US so hopefully I'll have something for you soon but in the meantime best of luck to all those who enter the competition there are little things that we can we can do during the menstruation for mm-hmm. example um, a simple tea made out of um, cumin and fennel. Drinking that as soon as your period is like a, a day before, you know that, you know, we all can say, okay, my period is going to come. Mm-hmm. So if you can start drinking that tea, it can really help to uh, help the flow. And lots of women feel better when the flow starts because it's apana is moving. Your apana is not stuck. Right, right. And, and it supports the process of the cleansing of your body, that. And as soon as it starts to flow, and we'll all start feeling better. And so this cumin and fennel tea is equal parts, cumin and fennel? Yeah. Like a teaspoon of each? Okay. Yeah, a of teaspoon of seed. each, boiling, and then drinking three to four cups during that period can give a lot of soothing for the cramps and the menstrual bloating and heaviness. Right. Definitely. Okay, so we can see how important it is to take note of our cycle, uh, to take note of any aggravations during that pit of phase of life. And if we don't pacify these doshic imbalances, then they can manifest in problems during the trans- menopausal transition. Isn't that correct? It is correct, yes. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, how each dosha, if aggravated, how would these menopausal aggravations manifest? Mm. Um, let's start with pitta because mm. menstrual cycle has a stronger influence by pitta. Mm. Um, as a, 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 in a constitution who is pitta predominant, uh, when the menstruation stops, they would have a bit more challenges pitta related symptoms such as uh, hot flushes, um, inflammatory um, feeling like a hot feeling, heat, burning hands and feet, these kind of s- symptoms, uh, over sweating, uh, sleeplessness. Um, these can experience. So the reason being that is in a pitta constitution person, a menstruation is a event to release these excessive pitta-related inflammatory factors, the heat, um, liver-related toxins. These things are kind of released because blood carries most of the impurities in our body and that would be released as the fresh blood would be produced once the menstruation finishes. Mm. So as there is a vent is being blocked, the pitta constitution would have this more accumulated heat. And then also any emotions related to anger, frustration, resentment, they can surface much more stronger and a person can experience these emotions more and related challenges in their life. A vata constitution person um, as a menstruation stops so the estrogen and progesterone they reduce in our body and that means the whole ju- the juicy feeling in the body reduces and a vata constitution person may go through the process of experience too much of dryness osteoporosis ache and pain uh, degenerative uh, conditions related to their nerves uh, joints memory related issues these things a vata constitution kind of person or a vata influenced men pause can look like. Mm. Um, in a kapha influence person, they may experience extreme weight gain, uh, feeling lethargic, unmotivated, tendency to feel depressive, melancholic. Um, these are the symptoms, water retention, lymphatic congestion, uh, hypothyroidism, 
these are the symptoms would be influenced by kapha when a woman goes through menopause. Mm. So what is your advice for women today who, let's start with, who are a few years out from menopause? And obviously, we don't know what age, you know, we are going to go through menopause. But say for a person 45 plus who hasn't mm -hmm. started menopause yet, what would your advice be? Um, I would say it's never too late. Uh, whatever the menstruation you still have got during that, you can start taking care of yourself um, in the sense what I was talking before, taking a little break nurture yourself don't go into the hustle bustle and rushing every day um, you deserve you know being a woman of 45 years old you have done lots of experience in your life that experience is enough take a break and rejoice what you have achieved so and in these three days in a month rejoicing yourself replenishing yourself you would have a full bit more energy and full force on go on doing what you want to do mm. uh, take care of your diet um, you know, do very gentle stretching exercise in yoga kind of exercises to support the process and grounding, eat nurturing food. If you like to enjoy a couple of pieces of dark chocolate, go for that. Try not to drink any alcohol during this process um, and spend time with your loved ones, um, connecting, you know, lots of hugs and cuddles. These are the process that a woman could go through around the age of 45, preparing themselves for the menopause. Yeah, and I think this is a really important thing to discuss because in the PETA stage of life, like we said, from puberty to menopause, it's the householder phase, right? It's creating your wealth, building a career, maybe building a family. It's very outward, an outward energy. And so as we come to the end of this stage, I, I always feel that there, especially for a pit, a predominant person, that there can be a hard time of letting go of or being attached to doing and being competitive and, and always having to, to have a purpose, you know, and, and not in the purpose of a bigger sense, but always have to be working. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and I feel that once we hit like 45 ish, we could, we need to start looking at the bigger picture of things and, if we go into head on into menopause with this full charge of pitta and really being competitive and intense and really working hard all the time, that that's going to really affect our experience of menopause. Um, so can you talk a little bit about this, this, this need to kind of let go a little bit in the, mm -hmm. for, for pitta? See, pitta? going through menopause, it's not about totally you know you, you don't need to be passionate you don't need to be achieving you don't need to be goal oriented mm -hmm. it, it's all about you could still continue to do that because your, your passion to do something make a difference and to improve and get better should not cease because it's just a menopause mm -hmm. it, it has got no relationship to that it can still continue mm -hmm. but it would be the stage for any human being particularly we are talking about women here it would be getting more spiritual awareness right because you know when we start our life process um you know in um, in, in ayurveda and yoga we describe the process the, the the purpose of life is uh, dharma artha kama and moksha mm -hmm. So if you look into that, like a dharma is initial, it's learning about righteous way of living, how harmoniously we can live with ourselves, surrounding, you know, it's a state of education and understanding. This is what starts in early stage at our home and then the education system and all those things. And then comes the artha. So that's where the financial thing so that we learn how to earn the means of life. Um, through our skills, our passion, what we resonate with in following the dharma um, at the same time. And then comes fulfilling your desires and your desires of senses. So then you, you make money and you get married, have family, children, you know, have the material world, all mm. those things. And then comes the, the after the artha state, it's a moksha stage. So this is the last stage of your life. When you have achieved and all the physical needs of your life, the senses, cravings, you've finished that one. And then what's left for life is something bigger. And pursuing the path of achievement, but having more of a spiritual understanding 
having more understanding of we all are one and how to connect and how to help others to grow, still continuing your passion. It, it's just a letting go of that me, 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 or I, um, mm-hmm. it's mine. Uh, this way it has to be, and I need to be seen. So it's a time that we can let go of what the ego demands and maybe connect to a, a bigger awareness, bigger consciousness. So it's, it's, it's a spiritual growth. Yeah. Like we we start with physical needs because human babies are very dependent, right? So we have a big physical need and physical challenges that we need to be taken care of. And then we have the the mental needs, intellectual learning studies, those things. And then we have the emotional needs, you know, which comes with the feelings, you know, experiencing life, material, everything through our feelings. And then comes the spiritual, the fourth one. Mm-hmm. So, so this is a time for us to understanding uh, and connecting to the, the bigger concept, the bigger awareness, still pursuing our passion. So that means what we want to achieve, if we let go of that control and right. connect to something bigger, we could still be passionate, make a bigger impact to many people right. and to yourself. So I would say going through menopause it's not for women to let go of their career or um or um what they want to be it's like it's more about letting go of control letting go of fear letting go of worry letting go of i have to do it all alone there's nobody's there letting go of these concepts Mm -hmm. and to connect to a bigger awareness and hold hands with other women other people and create something together and guide and inspire this is what would be the path of a woman going through menopause. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. And it is this, yeah, letting go of having to keep up with the Joneses of the, you know, the materialism and all that. And, and I do think that as that we go into the Vata stage of life, uh, post menopause, that there's more of a philosophical view on life. There's more being rather than doing. But like you said, this is not a you know a time to give up. It's a time when you can really show your true colors and really live in your true nature. Because if you were consumed in the pitta stage of life with building a family and with children and put, you know putting those children to school, maybe at this stage of life now you have more time to really develop yourself and your true nature and what your passions are and let that flower and bring that into the world. Absolutely. And Vata is all about fun, creativity, enthusiasm, connection. Right. And you're entering to that stage. So, you know, to relax and have a flow. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And this is why, you know, I really love to promote the wisdom stage of life, because it is a time where you can stand in your truth, you really care less what other people think, their creative energy is flowing. But I do think it's really important, particularly for the Pitta constitution, who's a lot of times are are attached to this productivity and this intensity and this competition. And I often find that people with a high pitta constitution have a hard time of letting go. And like you said, even the ego, the ego has to go through a change. And that can be hard because the ego is very attached to holding on to your identity. So there can be a a real uh, inner crisis almost if a person is very attached to who they are in the pitta stage of life and there are worldly attachments and there has to be an awareness of this letting go and going more into the Vata stage of life, looking at the bigger picture of things. Um, because if you don't have that awareness and if you're not ready for this, that it can be a time of identity crisis. Yeah, absolutely. Colette. It's, it's like, you know, the, it's a transition. It's a transformation. Mm-hmm. Women go through, I would call this like menopause for women. It's, in a, it's transiting and in transformation into something uh, different with more freedom. Right. And, and when we, when we want to transit and approach more freedom, that means you need to be true to yourself and the word you use true to your color, mm-hmm. true to who you are. Mm-hmm. And if, we cannot embrace ourselves as an individual, regardless of being you know, a CEO of a company or a doctor or a whoever that. And if we have created our identity on that and not as just me as a woman, um, then there will be a challenge mm. because the the changes, the nature demands you to be go through that transition and be you. 
And it's an opportunity created for us to be me. Mm-hmm. And that as a purely as a woman with full potentials and without needing to be a certain way for certain people, needing to be doing certain things for certain people, it just allowing you to be you. And if we have trouble in accepting ourselves, who I am, how I look, how I feel, and, and if we reject ourselves, menopause comes with lots of rejection and, um, and suffering. Yeah, absolutely. So I think having awareness about around this in the like we we're saying in the pitta stage of life and preparing yourself for this um, is so important because awareness is the key. If you enter this stage and you don't know what's going on and, you know, for some people, they may feel like they're losing it. Where is my, you know, particularly for a pitta person, you know, I, I have these conversations with people and they're like, I've lost my mojo. I no longer have this drive. I used to be able to work all day and have lots of energy. And now my mind's getting scattered because this vata energy is coming in and scattering things and wanting more of a being rather than constantly doing right Mm -hmm. yeah and Uh, and that mm -hmm. can be corrected it's just a transition it's like you know you've been flying like take an example you've been sitting on the airplane and sitting for 10 hours in the airplane as soon as you get down you feel spaced out it's just a transition period yeah. Great. So what do you do? You, you know, go test, rest, take a bath, go for a massage, go to bed early next day or in a two days time, you're going to bounce back. Right, exactly. So let's talk a little bit as we finish up here about the menopause period. What do you recommend for women during that time? You know, and it can obviously vary in length from woman to woman. Um, do you recommend a panchakarma during that time? Yes, I do definitely recommend mm-hmm. a panchakarma. Panchakarma is a process that's really key to help you transform. Mm-hmm. And going through the menopause, and as you said, you want to take a little break and you really want to go inward and check yourself and to reassess, okay, w- what I've been doing, what I want to do, um, who I am, what I want to release and let go. So panchakarma is the best process to do all those things in your life. And then bringing the different doshas, which may got out of whack um, from your whole life experience um, or what's been going on in your life until that stage can be guided in the right direction and you can really stabilize. It's almost like the broken fences. You can, you know, put it back up and strengthen with extra poles and mm. support it. So the, the rest of your half of your life can go with smooth with the with with the some changes that you would need to naturally your you you your body would ask you to be it doesn't mean that you would be less energetic uh tired no energy no mojo no it's it's it doesn't need to be like that and panchakarma exactly. can really prepare you for that and if you're not able to do panchakarma um taking care of yourself more routines rhythms uh, exercises and there are some herbs and supplements you can take uh, for example shatavari mm-hmm. is an excellent herb combined with ashwagandha uh, to help prepare the body but i would not recommend you to just go and buy from the shelf i would recommend to see a practitioner mm-hmm. uh, or a physician to understand the dosage or whether what amount you needed or you need some additional herbs um, things like uh, um, chase wood or um, Agnes Castor's uh, black cohosh, all those these herbs can help you with the symptoms of heart flushes, um, um, going through the irregular period or stabilizing the um, hormones, uh, helping with the circulation. Some herbs like Arjuna, um, helping with the uterine tone maintenance, Ashoka. Um, there are plenty of herbs that can be taken to support with the discomfort and the uneasiness and the the physical changes, the mental changes that women may go through during the period of this transition. Mm, mm, Great advice there. Thank you for all that. So I do think a panchakarma is amazing to treat yourself to at this stage of life. And it's a great process to really Take some time out away from your day to day, ideally going to a clinic where they can support you through this and just nourish yourself to this transition. So what stage, Dr. Sujata, would you suggest a, a woman does a panchakarma? Is it when she starts skipping her menstrual cycle? Is, is that the best stage to enter into a panchakarma? 
We are talking with respect to going through the process of menopause. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, when she start to skip period, basically menopause is defined as a woman not having menstruation for one year. Mm -hmm. So it takes, you know, um, in my experience of, you know, clinical observation, I would say, you know, it will go for one year to one and a half year. Women get cycles like a one month and then missed for three months and Mm -hmm. then comes back again and goes away for six months and then just suddenly disappears. And very few women I've seen that they just, the menstruation just, you know, goes just with a click. They Mm -hmm. never see the menstruation coming back again. Um, so when they are going through this and they start to see some early symptoms of like a dryness or maybe mild hot flushes, you know, changes in the body, like they start to gain weight or uh, restless sleeps. So any physical change that they see that I'm not the same, you know, I feel my skin is getting drier, my feeling a bit stiffer. So as the periods start to skip and if they see that I'm not feeling, this is what usually women say, I'm, I'm not really feeling myself. There's right. something going on inside me. Mm-hmm. They can't put a pinpoint thing, but they feel that the whole thing is changing mm-hmm. in them. That's the time I would say, yeah, you can. And if you if you could not come then and you, go, you have menopause, your menstruation stopped more than a month and you're going through lots of hot flushes and stuff, that would be another, I would say, that would be the must that you should do something to rebalance your hormones and um, revise your life plans and the way you want to look into life and yourself mm-hmm. and what's ahead of you. Yes, great tips there. And if a person, you know, can't do uh, a, a panchakarma, can't take that time away, then cleansing is great. Like you said, you're, the rituals of the dinacharya, really making sure that you're eating for your constitution um, or any imbalance you have. But seeking help, I think getting support during this stage is really important. And I really want to help people to think differently about this stage. Um, as we've talked about throughout this podcast episode today, it's a, it's a beautiful beautiful transition. And if you go into it with the uh, the right awareness and with keeping your body and mind in balance, that it can be a beautiful transition where you're stepping into your truth. You're letting go of any of the a- attachments in that peta stage where you felt like you had to always perform. And now you can go more with your flow and step into your truth. Um, of course, you'll still have responsibilities, but there's more of a wanting to connect with the truth of you. And when a a person connects with the truth of themselves, that energy resonates and it attracts other energy. And like you said, collaborating with other women or using all that wisdom that you've gained through life and putting that into something where you can uh, live out your purpose. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a transformative state. It's an empowered state. There's Mm -hmm. no you know, a, a, a expectation that we need to be such a way. And, and I feel that's where the women are going to let that down. She's done her job raising the kids, you know, mm-hmm. supporting the husband, being mm-hmm. the family. This is a time for her to be, be proud of herself right. and to be herself right. and nurture the experience that she has gained in her life and connect to the, to the divine and, you know, grow spiritually. Mm-hmm. So it's a time, it's a time of feeling free. Yeah, absolutely. And there is such a freedom in this stage of life and as such of um, a desire to like to connect to your true self, which is beautiful. And um, hopefully that we can start celebrating it more in the West. Definitely. Um, you know, um, in, in, in India, um, the women basically, it's almost like a celebration in India because, mm-hmm. um, as you know, during the menstruation, you know, some ceremonial things, temples, all these things, you can't go when when you are when you have menstruation, right? Mm-hmm. So um, there are certain temples um, in India. Um, women are not allowed, not in the form of taboo or anything, because. This temple, uh, men go following a month of strict obstinance, celibacy and ritual. So mm-hmm. this is almost like for men to go into themselves um, and doing this sadhana of, you know, take waking up very early and taking shower with the cold water, meditating, japa. So this is this this ritual for a man to connect to themselves and empower to asterisk methods and meditation and uh, you know abstaining them from the sex and so 
so in order to support those things, women are not allowed during this period when these men, after a month of practice, go to these temples. So, but the women the menopausal women, they can go. So that means when a woman attains the menopause, she has, she is treated as equal to goddess. Mm. And she's allowed to go to the temple anytime you want to this particular temple. Um, so that means it's almost like she is uplifted wow. to a stage that she is worshipable. She is mature. She is knowledgeable. She is wise and she so so basically those women have more respect and allowance and freedom to do things where menstruating the women during the menstruating period do not have oh that's beautiful i love that story thank you for sharing that <laughs> and i have one last question men obviously go through a transition as well and in the west we call it andropause does ayurveda say anything about that for men mm. No, 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 there is nothing significantly said. Um, the only thing, there's a chapter called Rasayana, which okay. is like a process of rejuvenation mm. um, done for um, for both men and women. And mm. Rasayana and Vajikarana, it's called. The Vajikarana is a process of treatments to increase uh, libido, virility, um, and uh, medicines and activities re related to something which are aphrodisiac. This mm. is the thing. So okay. it's recommended for both men and women. Um, and the Rasayana is a process. Um, it's geriatrics. So it's, it's related to both men and women who go through that transition. There's a whole chapter on Rasayana to replenish and nourish. So that's why I said um, in Ayurveda, if you are a, a woman going through menopause, Ayurveda has called the tool to rejuvenate and mm -hmm. replenish yourself and you don't need to feel okay i i lost myself or i lost my mojo no there is there's a whole whole chapter or a whole uh division dedicated for this raja rasayana or the rejuvenation therapy and that's recommended for both men and women who are in that um, stage of menopause or andropause Okay, great. Yeah, because of course, men will, even though they don't have the cessation of a menstrual cycle, but they will feel the effects of the vata, the excess, mm -hmm. the, the going to vata stage of life. Wonderful. Well, that was a great conversation. Thank you so much, Dr. Sujat. And before I let you go, could you tell people where they can find out more about you and the Emirates City Clinic in Bali? And if somebody's ready to do a pancha karma, how they can find mm -hmm. out more about that? Okay. Um, we have a Panchakarma Center in Ayurvedic Clinic um, in Ubud, um, Bali. And um, you can log into our website, www.amritasiddhi.com. And there you can get all the details related to how to contact us, different programs we offer. Um, due to the COVID-19 situation, uh, we are offering uh, even home-based Panchakarma programs, different detoxes mm -hmm. and custom-made programs to achieve all the different goals that you would have or thought of you wanted to do, such as weight loss, um, heal some chronic illnesses, build up your immunity. Um, these uh, online services are available currently and you can, um, through our website, you can um, reach us by sending us an email. Um, and if you plan to come to Bali, whenever this situation clears and we all regain our um, flexibility and independence to travel around, um, it's worth visiting uh, Bali and then visiting our center if you need some uh, support in physical and mental well-being. Definitely worth visiting Bali, the island of the gods. It's a beautiful place to visit and very healing. And also to visit Amirta City. So I'll put all those links in the show notes. And Dr. Sujata, thank you so much for taking the time to share this wisdom with us today. It was really informative and I appreciate all your wisdom that you shared with us. Thank you, Colette. It's been wonderful chatting with you. Okay, take good care of yourself and we'll talk again soon, Hope. Bye-bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Dr. Sujata and maybe gave you some food for thought regarding menopause and entering into the Vata stage of life. If you think this episode will be helpful to family or friends, I would appreciate it if you would share it with them. And don't forget to enter the competition for the Banyan Botanicals Women's Health Bundle. And also check out the link in the show notes to save 20% on women's natural transition. You could either click on the link in the show notes or visit banyanbotanicals.com forward slash elements. 
All the links to Amir to City and to my website are also in the show notes. So please check it out. And thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the podcast so those new episodes will automatically download. And if you haven't already rated and reviewed the podcast, I would really appreciate it wherever you listen to your podcast. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for your support. I hope you're well. Take good care of yourself. And until next time, ciao for now.